So it's time for an upgrade. Currently I have two CT sounds and I have an AT125.4 and I have this 2300.1. Very good amplifiers. I actually upgraded the amplifier from a 1400 to a 2300 because my current plan is to run three of these woofers instead of two. If you see here in my trunk space, I don't have a lot of space, but I definitely have enough space for three eighths and a little bit larger port. This port is quite big right now at 30 inches of port area um, and it's tuned pretty low. So the next setup is actually going to be tuned a tiny bit lower and it's going to have three of these woofers. Now one of the rules I wanted to do is keep this here. I didn't want this to come out any further past that little hump. There is a very weird shape here to this battery box. And you can see here the battery box goes underneath the woofer just a little bit. What I did was I decided to take this area here and make that flush. So what I wanna do is make a new box for another eight inch woofer, maintain the airspace, and somehow keep it flush with that front corner. You can see here that irregular shape, it's kind of weird but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna to do to try to combat that. If I lay my seat down, you can see back here, there's a gap right here. So this woofer box is 14 inches deep and it goes all the way to the top here, but there's a little bit of space at the bottom. So this is actually like four and a half inches. So the box I'm gonna build, I'm gonna to try to make this angle be four inches and see if it takes up some of that space. I know it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but that little bit of triangular space behind the box there is actually close to like a half a cube, which is almost exactly what I need to make the box a little bit bigger for the third woofer. However, I'm also gonna take up a little bit of the extra side space. You can see right there. So with that little bit of side space and the back corner piece, I should be able to add just enough space, about 0.6 cubic feet, or a little bit more and uh, incorporate this. This port is also a tiny bit too big. This is more of an SPL setup for these woofers. Tuned at 39 hertz and 0.75 cubic feet per woofer plus displacement. Which means that this setup right here plays down to about 28 hertz, but it's very loud in say the 35 to 45 hertz range. It's very, very loud. What I'm hoping to do is actually bring that down a little bit more. So when I adjusted my port here in the software, it made everything just work a little bit better and I was able to kind of just barely squeeze by taking a little bit of airspace away, away from each of the woofers and adding that airspace on the backside, I should be able to account for everything I need to make it just a little bit better. Currently, as this plays, we're looking at a 137 on the nose. We're gonna see how close we can get to a 140 just by making simple changes like this, but also this next box is gonna be a bit more of a musical box. I may shave like a half a dB, uh, maybe a little bit more off the top just because of the lower tuning, uh, but I will also bring my cabin resonance down just a little bit, and overall I should be able to play a little bit louder and a little bit lower. I went to Lowe's, I bought some hardwood plywood, and I used my favorite trick. I had them cut the wood. You may be thinking, wow, that's crazy. There's no way it could be right. Well, here's the deal. I took the wood, I put it on the saw, I measured to the blade, and then I stepped back and he cut the wood. Very simple. I'll show a picture here. I've been using this method for years to get nice straight cuts, and uh, I can just take the SUV and get it. I don't have to have a big truck, a trailer, nothing like that. So all I go is get my little parts like this. I take them home like that. I pay about $2 to have them cut, and then I have my little scrap pile right there. So I'm gonna show you a couple of the tricks that I've done differently from the website that makes this fit in my car. Okay, so this is the subwoofer box that I've designed currently and that I'm going to end up using for these three MISO 8s. And you can see here, the three of them fit in there quite nicely. The port is quite long. If you want to know more about using the software, uh, I'll drop a little tag right here and a link down below uh, on a video I made about this. So you can see here, the port is quite large and it goes uh, about yay far into the box. It can be tuned a little bit lower, but this is where I want to leave it and I'll show you why. 
Right now my port tuning is at 36 and my port area is at 32. The box volume is 2.24 and I'll show you what that does. Uh, 2.24 because it's 0.24 uh, for the woofer is 0.08 times 3 uh, is 0.24. So the actual chamber here that is uh, usable by the woofer is actually just 2 cubic feet. And I'll show you what that does uh, in another side. So this is a pretty good representation, this green line, of what the subwoofer can do. And right now, we're sitting at like uh, 4.5 dB, which is awesome. This is the current setup in the box. What I'm going to do now is change this to what I have now, which is 36 hertz and is in a 0.66 enclosure. So this is what I'm looking at um, with the three woofer so you see i lost quite a bit of the top end there but my f3 has dropped quite a bit as well you see my f3 here uh, is at 32 hertz so i can actually play just a little bit lower than that over the original setup so i lost i'm sitting at 3 db so i lost a little bit one and a half db i lost uh, just by just by lowering the tuning and dropping the enclosure size and if you look at this, it's really not necessarily so much about the enclosure side as it is the tuning. You see here, same enclosure volume, but the tuning. So it's very important when you're building a box that you realize that it's not just about the tuning um, or the enclosure side size. You know, it, it's more about the relationship between the woofer, the enclosure size, and the tuning that's going to give you the response that you want. Also, you see down here this little ripple meter. When I go up in tuning, you'll see I get close to that ripple point. Then I have to increase the box volume. It just makes it a little bit worse. So this is good for SPL. So the ripple basically is, uh, it's, it's sort of like group delay. What it is is when, uh, when it tries to change from one frequency to another, um, it's going to, it's not going to have a smooth transition if this is up too high. So my new setup is a little bit more musical down here. Um, and that's what I'm looking at right there, right in the middle of the ripple chart. So it should have a, uh, a decent transition, pretty musical box at the cost of that little bit of extra SPL. So what I'm hoping to do is actually gain that back using the third woofer, but then decrease my little ripple here. So it should be a louder and more musical enclosure altogether. So using a software like that, you can come back to this software right here and you can punch in all the stuff you want to get the uh, the rough specs that you need. Now, this is where I differ from the norm when it comes to this box. You notice there's no angle on the back. So how do you account for an angle? Well, I'll show you the easiest way to do that is to simply um, subtract. So what I've done here is I've made this 15.8. We're going to call it 16 and there's a reason why. So this is 16 inches from here to here, okay? Well, if you remember, in my car, I only have 14 inches. So I have to go from here, 14 inches to about here. And so I need to take two inches off the top of this and put it down at the bottom. So if you remember earlier, I have about a four inch slope on the back. So all you're gonna do is take that number, split the difference, which in this case is 14 and 18. So now I just make it 16. So because it's 16, when I take two off the top and add it to the bottom, all my enclosure volume will still be the same. And I'll show you that uh, a little bit later. However, you'll notice that this is 15.8. Okay, that's actually going to help me quite a bit. So I'm losing about a quarter inch off the back of this box compared to 16, which I'm going to make it 16 anyways. So I'm actually adding about a quarter inch sliver across the back of this box here. And what that's actually going to do is add airspace. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of airspace right there. Well, what I'm going to do with that is I'm actually going to kerf this front edge right here. So anytime you add a kerf, you have this nice square edge right here. So we're going to take that and we're going to cut it into a kerf, a little radius, like a, ha a quarter circle right here. Okay, so that radius is going to look cool, uh, but it's going to do two things. It's going to take away airspace and it's going to limit the length of the port okay so now my port length is only going to be so long about two inches shorter so knowing that i'm going to lose some of this 
volume by rounding this up will gain me some of that volume back okay so if anytime you want to add a kerf or bracing you're going to have to add extra volume to the enclosure in this case that's just what i'm going to do i'm going to add a little bit on the back side so i can take that little bit out of that kerf right there and call it a day um, i've done this trick many many times it works super well um, anything about more than about a quarter inch is probably gonna be too much um, and then you're gonna have just a little bit lower tuning but either way if you make simple changes like that to your setup here as long as your setup's right if it's plus or minus 15 percent it should be perfect however i can usually get this between you know plus and minus one uh hertz on the tuning frequency it's usually about a half a hertz off just based on small minute changes like uh, any sort of bracing you may add is going to adjust your tuning just a little bit armed with this knowledge knowing that we are going to put a nice little kerf right here we're going to uh, add just like 200 thousandths to the back of the box and the fact that we are going to make this angle I'm going to show you how this is going to play out uh, on the wood I'm going to show you what that does to your port because obviously you're taking two inches off the top of your port right here and you're adding it to the bottom I'm going to tell you this it does not matter as long as your port is wider than however much you're taking off so in this case the port width here is quite a bit we'll say two and three quarter upwards of three inches so I can take at least that much off the top and add to the bottom the math is the same for a triangle it's one half base times height okay so all you're doing is taking a small sliver and putting it on the top I'll show you so this is the side view of the subwoofer enclosure and what we're gonna do is we're going to take off two inches here and we're going to add it here when you draw the new line like so Okay, what you end up with is all you're doing is taking this little piece of area right here and you're flipping it down. You're rotating it about that axis right there and you're rotating it down to the bottom. That's all you're doing and that's giving you all that math right there. So what you're actually doing, instead of taking your port length, you know, the width of the port right here, instead of being this area, if you take this, say that's 2 and this is 10, right when you add that together now you have a triangle but now this is four but that's still ten okay so now if you take all that and you add all that together with that being zero that being four it's the same literally it comes out to be exactly the same if you simply take off from the top add it to the bottom if you take off from the top or add to the bottom without subtracting the difference you're gonna have a bad time so say you only want this to be two inches then you need to need to take off one add one and that will make that overall will make that two okay so if you only want a two inch slant that's how you do that been doing this for years works wonders so even though your port has a weird shape all said and done your port is going to look like this it doesn't matter it literally doesn't matter this little flat spot on the top you're going to ignore that you're going to take this here you're going to flip that on top that's what your port is going to look like this rectangle shape instead of this funky shape it doesn't matter if it's a rectangle shape triangle shape circle shape any kind of shape as long as this area and that length is what you want that's all that matters okay so here's some tricks on to how i actually cut the board uh to to give me the best results this top piece here is uh going to be the top so the top in this case is going to be 14 inches you can see it's 14 on the nose this is going to be the bottom of the box. It is 18 inches. You can see it's 18 inches on the nose. There's another piece right here that I have that is 17, and it's actually going to be the back, the back slant. And all these right here, along with my scrap piece, these are going to be the sides. Now what I've done here is I've cut me two of the same height of the same length. Okay, so these were part of the secondary cuts. And these pieces here are actually going to be sort of my trial and error because whenever i measure this down and i start cutting the little curves i got to cut a bunch i make a bunch of series of cuts like that over some what of a distance i have to calculate to get that wood to bend like it needs to to get around that radius first thing i actually like to do is lay out the enclosure so in this case i'm going to lay out where the edges go i'm going to take a, a piece of wood and draw little lines. I'm going to measure where the port will need to be. 
I'm going to draw those lines and once I get all that I'll have a visual representation of what the box is going to look like with all the pieces on. Then what I'll do is I'll start calculating my, cor my curve here and then I'll start cutting my curve and then once my curve is correct, so what I'm going to do, this board is very long, okay? When I put it here and I come down and I start to wrap it inward, okay, this length here is going to be very long, longer than it needs to be. What I'm going to do then is once the kerf is, is done and I'm happy and I can glue it together, I'm then going to cut it to the correct length here. I'm going to lay it back out and cut it to the correct length and put it on. And if I destroy one piece of wood, I still have another one and I have that long piece right there that I can use for my sides and stuff. One of the hardest parts about this is actually doing sort of the angle. So getting the, uh, the back piece that goes on there and the sides, you know, they're not the easiest thing in the world, but I actually do those last because that's the easiest way for me. Uh, that way, if I need to make small cuts or sands to get that to fit in there properly, I can. And then of course I do my sides after. I'm gonna go ahead and get this laid out and I'm gonna get my curve started because that's gonna be the most important part. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna make my curve go around the back. Once that piece is done, then I'll start doing the port pieces and then I'll do the sides in the back and all that other stuff. So I've got some simple measurements here. I'm gonna start laying this out. This one here is 31 and 7 eighths. So if I come down here, 31 and 7 eighths. If I come back here, I'll do it again, 31 and 7 eighths. Then I come over here and this one is going to be 11 and three quarters. So I'll come up here, line those two marks up, 11 and three quarter, right here. And I come over here, I measure this one as well, 11, not that much, 11 and three quarter. Okay, so these are going to be the basis marks. I don't like using a Sharpie, but I'm doing it because it shows up better on the video. So now I'm going to go ahead and start lining these up and show you what it does. Okay, so I've got this laid out. You can see right here, this is basically what the inside of the port is going to look like according to the drawing right there. It looks pretty similar. Then what I want to do is make this curve here. So what I like to do is take anything round object. Uh, you know, if we want a four inch uh, diameter or four inch radius, you'll need an eight inch uh, diameter piece. This one's nine inches, so it'll give me a four and a half inch radius kerf. Um, I like to kind of eyeball it sometimes because you don't need a whole lot of kerf, but you kind of do need a bigger piece than you think you do. Okay, so it it's kind of looks weird, but you need a piece that's pretty big to get a size kerf that doesn't look crazy. So I'm going to take this here. This is just what I have. You can use the Tupperware, you can use a paper plate, you can use whatever you want. Okay, and I'm just going to draw that like so. And you see that nice little round curve I make? This is a 9 inch piece. It looks pretty big. I'm telling you, it's not. I've used paper plates before to do the same thing, and it works just fine. So now that I've got the outside of my kerf put on here, I'm actually going to ignore this piece of, you know, the lines I've made beyond the kerf. So now the only thing that matters is going to be the center of this curve here, okay, which is at this point here, this imaginary point. You draw a little line out in 45 degrees. That's going to be the center of the curve, okay, because this right here, 90 degrees. So now what I've got to do is measure from here all the way around to the center of that. Then I've got to measure that much, times it by two, and it needs to be in the middle of that zone. So I'm actually going to measure from there all the way to the center here and then I'm gonna measure back out each side. So when I put it on here, I'm gonna take that, measure down, make a line to where that is. And then I'm gonna come back so many inches on either side and I'm gonna cut little slits all the way through there. I'm gonna put it on here and make sure that it follows that curve very nicely. Once I can get it on there and it follows that curve, I'm gonna come it down here and I'm gonna cut that piece to that length right there. I'm just gonna make a mark and cut it. Then what I like to do is a few things. I like to put a 45 degree piece on this angle here. It's going to be very difficult to do here, so I'm going to just omit it. However, I do like to put a little bit of support here with just a simple piece of a 45 like that. 
and then I'll use my sander and I will round this whole section right here down and make it nice and pretty just like that. I'm gonna get set up and start cutting my kerf piece and uh, we'll see where we end up. Okay, so when you're cutting the wood, what I like to do is leave it just a little bit farther down. I don't like to have it sticking way too far out. However, when you're gonna make a kerf cut, you need to lift that blade up. Because you don't want it to cut all the way through the wood. So you want it to cut about right there. So you can see it's leaving just a little bit of that last layer left and it's not cutting down into the veneer. That's what you want, about like that. So I've also went ahead and measured these pieces right here and that's where we're gonna start cutting. I already measured these pieces right here. The center line is where the kerf begins and then the first and last marks here are where the kerf will end up. So we're gonna cut all this out and I'll show you how. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the center line and then I'll start working my way out to each of the other sides. We'll do that now. When you exit the cut, you want to make sure the foot of your saw doesn't teeter down. You want to hold it back flat and just go straight out with it. You get done with your curve cuts. Hopefully they look better than this, but I'll tell you this, I've seen a whole lot worse look a whole lot better. So uh, this is basically, you just make a whole bunch of cuts like that and it should fold over on itself. Let's try it out. So as you can see here, it's pretty floppy, that's what you want. On the front face, there's no damage, see, nothing came through there, it's perfectly flat. However, you see that it has like a wave to it, and that's because it's going to curve around just like that. It's literally magic. And it's literally that simple. Okay, so you see what I've done here? This side here is lined up on the edge. Okay, you can see right here, it's bending on around. Just like that. This is the outside grain of the wood. And look, it looks beautiful and nothing broke through. And then you see on the inside there, it kind of just takes it up, just like that. What you do is you want to put sawdust and wood glue inside of there will make it nice and strong. What I like to do is just put it in there before I squish around, pack it, and then I just keep coming and wiping all that glue up and then I'll put more glue on it and I'll basically make this super solid all the way around. If it's a little not perfect, you can kind of sh shimmy that out. You see just like that. What's important is that this is square and that is square. This right here will fall somewhere in the middle and will look super good and just like I explained before, this is very long, okay? But now what I gotta do is come back, make a mark right there, and then cut that. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So as you can see, I've got my kerf. I've made my mark. I'm gonna scoot this over to the edge, about like that. I'm gonna clamp it down so it doesn't flop because I don't wanna damage it. And then I'm just gonna cut that off right there. And that is going to be my baffle and the first side that goes inside the got my scrap piece i just cut off clamped down and while i'm here i'm going to go ahead and cut that piece there and that piece there normally what i would do is i would just cut this on a 45 and i would keep that piece for the inside corner there and then i would just cut that straight but in this case i'm not going to need it for the corner there so i'm just going to cut it on a 45 cut it straight but i'm only going to keep that piece that's left and i make it about two two and a half inches long so i've made two cuts this one made a little 45 piece that kind of got a little chip taken out this would normally go inside the corner there, like so we're not going to use that. But we are going to use this. This piece here is the piece that was cut off after that. This piece is going to go right here. You can see that's a little short. Basically it's going to go in just like that. And what this is going to do is going to stiffen the end of the port and basically prevent any resonances from the end of the port. Just like that. See this piece right here is literally just that piece right there. We're gonna glue that together, but now we have all these pieces we can start. We could do the port, the front, the baffle, everything but the sides and the back. So what I actually need to do is start cleaning some of this stuff up. But the first thing I'm gonna do before that is a little trick I've been doing for a long time, which is pretty simple. Once you put your kerf on here, okay, this makes all the difference in the world, okay? Once you put your kerf on there, you need to measure 
to here whatever that dimension is and I cut a piece for there because that is going to be a double baffle we're actually going to glue that together and that is going to give us more rigidity on the front only we're adding this piece to the inside of the enclosure so a couple of the tricks I'm going to do now are totally optional but this is what I do the first thing I'm going to do is actually get this glued on here and setting up before I start sanding it so I'm going to glue that brad it clamp it and set it aside the next thing I'm going to do is actually square up these baffles and I'll show you what I do with it. So I'm not going to worry about cleaning this stuff up too much right this second. But I do need to get this piece glued because it needs to be solid before I start the next step. The glue I use is a Gorilla brand. It's pretty decent. People use Tight Bond and everything else, but this Gorilla brand, for whatever reason, for me, I think it works the best. I just like it a lot, plus I can get it all the time, I can get it right here in my local town, I can get it from Walmart, I can get it from Lowe's, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to just square these up top to bottom, okay, and then I'm going to clamp them, about like that. Now everything looks dirty, but we're going to rough it up, we're going to clean it at the end and I'm going to shoot two little brads right through here I'm going to set that aside the next trick I do is very 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 important okay we're going to take this side here we're going to flip over our baffle this is our baffle piece we're going to take our baffle here our second piece that we just cut, okay, we're going to line it up. You want to make sure you leave your three quarter inches over here. We're going to line this up perfectly. Okay, then we're going to shoot some brad nails through it. Okay, we're going to shoot some brad nails. Okay, I'm just going to do two corners, all right? So the purpose of this is actually just to hold this together. So all we're going to do is hold it together. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to lay out where the subs are going to go. Because we know we have to fit three 8-inch subwoofers on this little section right here. So I'm going to line all this stuff out and I'm going to mark where they're going to go. Okay, so I've lined these out. They're pretty much going to be sitting side by side by side on here because there's just not a whole lot of space. But what you need to do is actually mark all of these where they're going to go. And what we're going to do is precisely drill a little pilot hole all the way through each one of these. Okay, and what we're going to do now is once we separate them, these pilot holes will already be drilled. So we take our router jig and we cut the first hole out of this one separately, because we're going to have to cut our hole separately. Then once we put it all together, it's going to line up perfectly. Okay, now we have the inside baffle. The outside baffle, they have three tiny little holes. And we will put, when we put these back together, after we cut our holes separately, those two different size holes are going to line up perfectly the first time. But what we can do now is actually begin assembly on this portion of the enclosure. We'll fill this full of glue, we'll glue the bottom, we'll stick it all together, brad nails, all the rest. I learned this trick a while back, but basically you get you one of these silicone cooking brushes and you can brush your glue on there. And then once you're done, whatever reason, when it dries, it just peels right off. Now, but now we already have the baffle is soaked. You got all kind of glue in there. So we're gonna actually curve this around. You'll see that glue starting to come out like that. That's what you want. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on here. And we're going to actually glue it into place and put some brad nails on it. So I'm gonna run a bead of glue down here. Now I've learned a long time ago, you don't require any, any, sealant of any kind to seal a box up. All you need is wood glue and good technique. So we're going to put this in here. I'm going to establish my corner over here. I'm going to send my first brad nail through this corner. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to establish this side. Once I get that side exactly lined up, 
I'm going to shoot a brad nail through there. I'm going to line this up. Shoot a brad nail through there. A couple more. Now what I'm going to do is bend my kerf on around. I'm going to line it up exactly where it needs to be. Which is right there. I'm going to send a brad nail to the bottom where that kerf is. Gotta shot my brad nail a little off center there, no big deal. Clean that back up. Okay, now we have the kerf and it's attached. I'm gonna go ahead and run some glue on the inside, clean up the outside. You see the little bit of glue we have squirting out of this kerf. It's pushed all that out of there. That's all junk. You want to try to keep it in there. You'll have to add more as time goes on. But basically what you're doing is you're filling that entire set of cracks there with glue. It should just be a wall of glue, just like that. Once that dries, perfect. So you can see here we've got a little bit of progress made. This is all glued up and dry now. You can see how that's just a big, thick wall of glue. We'll get to that in a little bit. I've sanded a little bit on here. I've sanded this corner down and I've sanded these corners down. So now what we're gonna do is in this case, I actually need to put the top on. That way I can get the back set up and the sides will be last. Once I do the top and the back, then I can do the side. That should give me just enough space to access the inside of here and be able to clamp these down. Now, once I have both holes, sets of holes cut out, I can come back in here and actually clamp inside the holes. So now that we have the back on and assembled, we're going to start cutting these holes out. We're going to cut out three holes here that are the outside diameter of the woofer, and then we're going to cut three holes in the piece that goes behind there of the cutout diameter of the woofer. As remember properly, we have this baffle piece here that's going to go inside. We need to cut three holes. These three holes are going to be the cutout diameter that the woofer is going to mount to. Then right here, where we drilled those three little pilot holes earlier, they line up here and they line up here. So this one, we're going to cut the outside diameter times three. And then when we put these together, we're going to slide that inside, glue it, clamp it, and brad nail it down. Then we're going to have the outside and the inside holes, and they're going to line up perfectly the first time. What I'm actually going to use to cut these holes is this Jasper jig right here. And the woofer we're actually building this box for is these CT Sounds Meso 8 inch subwoofers. They're the new version. They're pretty beefy and we're going to put three across here. What we want to do is measure across the top side here all the way across. In this case, I've written this number down, eight and three quarter. And then of course you're gonna need the cutout diameter. I want to, I went to the website and found the specs right here. I'll put the link annotation. I think it goes right there. And uh, basically this is going to be seven and a quarter inches on the inner dimension cutout. So on the Jasper jig right here, this is the blade. I need to back that blade up a little bit. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna measure from the outside of the blade. In this case, I want eight and three quarter. So I'm going to move my screw into this hole that says four and three eighths, because I divided by two. So in this case, it'd be four and three eighths. So if I measure out here and I come in, the screw is a tiny bit crooked, but you can see that it lands on that three eighths mark right there. What I have to do is tilt this up, put that screw in that hole, plunge that down. Obviously I want to bring that up just a little bit more and then twirl it around times three and cut my holes out. So let's do that. I want my Jasper jig to have about seven eighths of an inch sticking out the bottom. We're cutting through three quarter inch. Now a little bit extra is just gonna help clean up that edge a little bit. It still may have some nasty areas, but we'll deal with that when that comes. Typically the nasty areas are going to be on the inside 
where the bottom of the blade is. So cutting like so is actually going to leave us a nice edge on the outside. So this is pretty loud and pretty nasty, so I'm probably going to do this off camera. But basically you put that screw right there into that pilot hole that you made. And you twill it around and you make sure that you get the right dimension for the right size of your cutting. So it's pretty dark at the time of filming this, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. Okay, so what we're actually going to do now is cut the holes. And what I do is I put a screw in there just like that. I'll take my screw gun. I'm going to start the screw in the hole. Just like that. And then I'm going to fire it up. And as I turn it on, I'm going to run that through there. and just going to plunge it down. And then we're going to spin it around. So I'm going to turn it on. When I'm done, I'm going to let it come all the way to a stop before I pull this piece out. Otherwise, there's a good chance that that piece is going to start spinning like that. So I'm going to cut two more, and I'll show you how it works out. So when you have your holes cut, then I'm going to do is take my second piece, and I'm going to put it up here just where it would sit behind the first one, like that. I'm gonna punch some brads in it and now I'm gonna cut this side out. Okay, so now we're gonna cut the holes for the other side. And what I've actually done here is measured this. This is seven and eighths, so I'm gonna make this three and five eighths, and we're gonna cut those out too. Let's go ahead and start it. And we're gonna drop this out now that it stopped. Check it out. That's our cutout diameter right there. So now we're going to cut the other ones and we're going to pull it apart when we're done and see where we're at. Okay, so here's the box, mostly completed. I got to go through and clean some stuff up. You can see right here that didn't work out too well. Those were a little too close. I'll post a picture right here somewhere showing you what happened. Not a big deal. This is what I end up with. I've done this before and it looks pretty good. I've added a little hole right in the side right there. And of course the port looking real nice. I'm good to go. You can see here the triangular shape of the port and how everything works out here. This is going to look and sound amazing. And there you go. That's how you build a nice custom subwoofer enclosure. Very simple, very basic, very easy. All right, so this is the box that I built and tell me what you guys think. I bought this stuff right here. It's carbon gray stain. I'm guessing that's what it's gonna look like. I've got some urethane and I've got some carpet. So here's my thought, okay, maybe put the gray stain here all the way the inside of the port, urethane, all of that, maybe even right here, put the stain right here, urethane right here, but then the carpet, I'll bring it up, now carpet to here, right? So the whole front of the box will be carpet, it'll go down into the hole like that. But then all this will be stained. So you're really only going to see a little bit of stain here. And of course you'll see the stain here. And at some point the carpet will have to be cut here. Allowing the stain to be seen. So what do you think about stain here, stain here, and then carpet everywhere else. Okay guys, so here's the box after I've done a little bit of work to it. Basically sanded it down, put a little coat of stain on it. I'm going to sand this stain off of here and uh, add just a little bit more to it to try to get a little bit more sort of vibrant color to it. We're gonna have carpet and stain. So instead of painting the port black like I usually do, I think this will suffice. It'll give me the same effect without just ruining the grain structure. So we're gonna go for something like that. So this is what it looks like after I did the first layer of stain and sanded it just a bit. You can see the low spots are filled in with the stain and the high spots are basically back to the wood color the what i was really worried about is that all this scratching right here that i did when i was sanding when i went against the grain so i think i'm gonna have the carpet at least come up to this point right here and then stop the inside of the port looks pretty nice this part looks pretty good not to mention the stain the glue doesn't stain so i really didn't build this box to stain it but i'm gonna try to do the best i can with what i have okay so here's a quick look at 
the old box versus the new box and some of the things that um, I had to do to make this work. So originally I had these two 8 inch woofers, uh, 30 inches of port area, this is a one and a half cubic foot enclosure and it was very good, it sounded really good and it hit pretty hard and it was actually quite loud. Well, I want to add a third woofer and I want to add more power. Well, the problem is I couldn't really give up a whole lot of space. So this height, I had to stay there. This depth had to be the same and the width had to be the same. So in this case, the height and the width is the same. The difference is now I have this angle, this wedge on the back of the box. Because what happened was I had this big space here behind the seat that wasn't being used. So just by adding this little bit of space here gives me almost a half a cubic foot. Okay, so uh, the problem is this has 30 inches of port area, but I added half a cubic foot. So, you know, I, I'm ch this one, the port was maybe a little bit too big. Well, now the port is right at the bare minimum. Um, so what I had to do was some couple tricks. One is the port by angling the back of the box and, and calculating the port. The, the back of the port is a triangle. Don't worry about that. However, now that my port is at sort of the bare minimum of area for three woofers, you know, um, this extra airspace, this little bit of extra airspace, what I had to do to keep the same port area is I had to add this kerf. Okay, so there's no kerf on here because it doesn't need it. Well, this one definitely needs the kerf. The kerf will slow the air down and prevent any sort of chufing. And it had a more seamless transition between the airspace on the front of the woofer and the airspace that's going into the port. There'll be less turbulence here. So the port with the kerf was 100% on purpose. It had to be. So another thing you'll notice is that uh, that port is quite long. This port is a little bit shorter. It's about 5 inches shorter. And that's only because the enclosure size went up, thus the, the port length uh, was able to get a little bit smaller. But actually, I think this one is tuned maybe a few hertz lower than this one because the goal for this box is bandwidth, not SPL. On this here, it was uh, SPL with a little bit of bandwidth. I got the most I could out of the woofers. SPL-wise, I realized that if I add a third woofer, I should be able to get more bandwidth while keeping the same SPL or somewhere around there. Uh, the goal is to make a little bit more bandwidth. When this box goes in the trunk, this carpet will match the outside. This real fluffy carpet here is super nice, but it didn't really match the interior. This stuff here will match perfectly to the interior of the vehicle and it should sit in there pretty nicely. Uh, but now we have this nice port standing out that I don't really care for things standing out, but it does look pretty good. So. Uh, the transition on the port came out very well and uh, nice crispy edges all the way around. So definitely looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and throw the woofers in here and maybe tomorrow we'll uh, do a video see what they sound like. We have three of these Monster Miso 8 inch woofers. Uh, they go upside down like that. Right now the box is upside down. I did all my wiring earlier so I should be able to... Uh, Simply connect these, and now we can drop these into the enclosure. It's part of the problems you face when you have a woofer that's just as big as the hole. So one thing I need to do is uh, make them all straight. We will do that last. I got a trick. I'm going to put a straight edge across here. I'm going to line up the dust cap and the screw holes. All right, boys, she's finally done. There's your port. Three miso eights. Fantastic. Didn't turn out the best, but definitely not the worst. Awesome. So you can clearly see here the four inches I tried to add on the bottom here. That gave me that little bit of extra space. That's where that came from. All the other dimensions are identical except I took up this extra wasted space there trying to get 
as much as I could out of this enclosure. All right, let's throw in the car and see what she sounds like. I'm gonna install the subwoofers in the car now, so let's go ahead and do that. Here's the box itself, ready to go in. Got quite a bit of uh, sunlight going. I'm gonna put that in there and then we'll see what we need to do. Well, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is it is incredibly heavy. I've got my speaker wire right here. I've gotta hook it up uh, right there. You can see I don't have a whole lot of space here to do this, but we're gonna try. These are pre-10, this is 10 gauge. It's gonna go in the little hole right there. We'll give her the old tighten down. This is the screw style and you can get them pretty tight. So that's what we're looking at right there. I'm gonna stuff her the rest of the way in. Speaker wire behind the box, like so. Make sure I don't sit on it. I'm gonna hold it about like that. And I'm gonna push her on in. Alrighty, so she started. Let's get her going back. That's why I wanted the carpet. It's for that reason right there. Nice and matching. Let's give her the old stuck. I need two hands for this. That's what she said. Oh, stuff. And I think that's it. That's all we got right there. All right, that's where she's gonna stay. Just like that, I've got all the way to that edge, all the way to that edge, the top and the bottom. This thing is held in there very firmly by the squish between here and here. Let's check out the other side. God, she's beautiful. say we break out the term lab and see how loud she is. So let's run that. Okay, so we got a 138.3 at 1863 watts. That's pretty good. It did kind of have just a tiny little bit of clipping right there. I can see it on my light down here and you kind of watch on little uh, notches right there. But I'm going to take that score, 138.3. I'm going to take that one. And uh, yeah, so that's it. That's what three MISO 8s in a trunk. No back seats down. Nothing like that. Good to go. All in the trunk's closed and the sensor's on the dash. So, cool. I like it. Guys, I don't know if those numbers are any good or not. Hopefully you guys can help me decide that. But that's what it is. Those are the numbers. I'm not going to try to fudge them. Uh, basically... 3 inch woofers, I'm at a 138.3 at the most that I've tested tonight and uh, that was after the battery sank down a little bit. I waited just a few seconds for it to come back up. Um, it's running nothing more than a 2300.1 and a super cap. Everything else is stock electrical and these are the subwoofers that we have. Hey!